Hello all, Shoestring here. I've had several questions recently about how does my solar power get into the house? Well, I know I discussed this in a couple other videos, but I'll go ahead and make another one just for that. Uh, excuse the mess, I am still updating my system, trying to get the capacity I want. But I will walk you through how my system works. So let's start at the beginning, which is the solar panels on the roof. So I have three 200 watt solar panels, which of course comes up to 600 all total watts power on the roof, which eventually I'm going to have to expand. But at the moment, that's what we have. Little ladder there because I've been cleaning the solar panels off. Okay, so what happens is the wires from the solar panels come down. They are in parallel, and they come down to this fuse box. It's 30 amp, 240 volt. And of course, you just throw the switch if something happens and you need to fix it. Or it blows itself if it's a problem. Down, 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 into the ground where it goes inside. All right, from the inside, it comes up here and goes up into the charge controller, which is a TriStar. And uh, what's it doing now? 249, 13.1 volts. And I've got half my house connected to it at the moment. All right, so from there, of course, it goes down into the batteries. I have three 12.8 volts, 200 amp hour, in parallel, keeping them all 12 volts. Uh, I talked in an earlier video about my uh, need extra power solar panels when my three on the roof isn't enough. Um, it's not connected right now because I don't really need that extra power at the moment. So from there, of course, the batteries are connected to my inverter. This is a Ames modified sine wave 8000. I plan on upgrading this, by the way, to a pure sine wave in about 6,000 watts. But I haven't come up with a good inexpensive one yet that will do the job. I don't need something that's going to conk out in a year or so because I really use mine. So if you have any idea, 6,000 watts, really, really good pure sine wave, let me know. Make sure it has a box. So here, my uh, inverter. You can plug it in, but I have it connected to the house by this block right here. Everyone can see the block. Yeah, I hope so. There it is. There's the block. And of course, the pure sine wave I get, I want it to have a block because it will be necessary. So the block, what does it do? It comes down and goes into another circuit breaker. Have to be careful with these. Don't want any fires. From there, it goes into a power max, which is a automatic transfer switch. So, what does that mean? That means when the power in the house goes out, this automatically comes on and keeps the backup going. So, it comes down. All the way down into the ground and then into the house. So I'll show you what's over there. So in the house, this is a small section where we keep a lot of food and backup supplies. Comes up into this power box. This little box here. Utility room outside. Water pump, which is also runs off my solar. All these things right here, this whole circuit box has to do with solar. And it is connected in the other room to the main, main box. So it goes from this circuit, circuit breaker box to the main circuit breaker box in the house. And that's how my power goes from 
my battery room in here to the uh, circuit circuit breaker in the house and how I run it. Right now, I am running about half of my entire house off my battery backup because I like testing it and just face it, I like using my own generated power than something from the uh, electricity company, even though I have no intention of disconnecting from the grid. Because I like comfort, and if I want to turn my air conditioner on, I will. So it's got cloudy outside, and as you can see, the watts into the house, into the charge controller has dropped to 177. These things go down. And how much I use is also dropped a little, so we're at 13 volts. As soon as the sun comes up, it'll pull back up. My batteries, which are not perfect yet because I don't have all of them. I have three of these cheap Power Queen 12.8 volts, 200 amp hours. I want four because I want to have enough storage power in case the power goes out for a while. We've had several power outages, so I'm glad I have these. One more will go there, then I'm going to tighten all the wires up. I'm going to make these short as possible. I'm going to run wires from my new inverter straight into the batteries, of course, and I'm going to want a, probably have a circuit breaker in there, too. Probably a 300 amp hour fuse, I'm guessing. I haven't decided yet, but I'm going to put one right in there, right in between, so there won't be any problems. And that's how I'm going to end up working on my system for this portion. I do want to have a uh, another setup, which is going to be right down here. About four of these other cheap lithium-ion batteries. And probably something for 240 volts. Some inverter that would do 240 volts. Not that I know a lot about it, but I'll figure it out. And that way... Mrs. Shoestring can have her items that are 240 volts, like her stove and that type of thing. Okay, if you have any questions, please put them down in the comments. If you like these kind of videos, like and subscribe. Even if you're just looking at it, just go ahead and like it. That helps the channel, and more people will see videos like this. And it may, in fact, help them. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention. Let's jump this out real quick. I am not an electrician. I go this far right here, the inverter. And from here out, I have an electrician do. Someone who actually knows what they're doing. Because I don't want to kill anyone. I don't want to burn my house down. So just a safety note there. I go as far as the inverter. I'll hook the inverter up and everything else, but I will not do electrical to or in the house. We let electricians do that. Okay, like I said, like and subscribe, hit that little bell, and shoestring out.